Welcome to module 11 on systems and data for COVID-19 vaccination monitoring. My name is Jan Grevendonk and I work in the immunization and vaccine department at WHO. By finishing this module, you should be able to describe vaccination data needs and explain how to monitor the implementation of COVID-19 vaccination. The first thing you will have to do is to think through the anticipated needs from different stakeholders. Those include public health decision makers and other national and subnational authorities, but also the public civil society organizations and the media, as well as national, regional and global immunization stakeholders, such as development partners and international organizations like the World Health Organization, and also vaccine manufacturers, regulatory authorities, health researchers and academics. All of them might have an urgent and critical demand of data, that national programs should be able to provide. To meet those needs, you will need to design and implement a system that is able to measure vaccination uptake and coverage over time by geography and across target groups. In the case of COVID-19 vaccines, it's very important that that system is also able to measure whether national policies for prioritization are being implemented. For example, are older adults getting their vaccines ahead of other people? The system will need to provide a personal vaccination record that individuals can use to show that they're really being vaccinated, um, but also for public health officials who need it for a safety and disease surveillance, for vaccine effectiveness studies, or for using coverage service. Finally, the personal record is, is also very important to make sure that all scheduled doses are administered on time and that dropout is reduced so that people who, who are vaccinated once and need to come back for a second dose uh, are aware that they need to come back. Just a quick note on the difference between vaccine uptake versus coverage. We will use the term vaccine uptake or also vaccination rate as the number or proportion of people who are vaccinated with a certain dose in a certain time period. So for example, 10% uh, of the total population was vaccinated in a certain year, let's say. Vaccine coverage is a different concept that measures the vaccinated proportion of a target population, whether this happened um, in the current period or previous periods. So the difference is that in later periods, you will have to take into account everything that happened before that period as well. So for 2021, we can use the two terms interchangeably as uh, we just start vaccinating people and we don't really have to worry about what happened before. The main indicator that will need to be measured is coverage. We annotate that as COV, not for coverage, but for COVID, and an addition for the number of the dose. So we will talk about COV1, COV2, COV3, uh, depending on which dose in the schedule is being measured. There will be different vaccine products and all of them might have different dose requirements. So in able to compare the second dose of a product that requires a two dose schedule with a third dose of a product that requires a three dose schedule. We also propose the annotation COVC that compares the final dose in each of these schedules. What we will also then will want to monitor is the dropout that might exist between the first dose of a schedule and the, the final dose, the dose that completes a schedule. And we call that uh, the dropout between COV1 and COVC. And the formula is uh, written there. So it's the proportion of people who started on a first dose, but didn't complete the required final dose. This main coverage indicator will need to be disaggregated further according to some minimal dimensions. The first critical dimension is by vaccine product. So what does that mean? It means that you need to record and report the vaccinations provided by vaccine product. And that is very important because all of these vaccine products might have quite different characteristics in terms of effectiveness and safety. The second dimension is the sex of the vaccinated person. So that is important to to evaluate gender uh, equality and gender equity of vaccination programs. Third dimension would be geography. It's important to see that the vaccine is being distributed outside of the main urban centers, for example, and is equitably distributed across the country. So it's important to measure coverage and uptake by province, state, district, etc. And finally, 
because age is so important with COVID disease, uh, you will want to disaggregate based on at least uh, two age groups, so above and below 60, for example, uh, to make sure that um, people above 60 are being prioritized for vaccination, if that is a national policy. Then there are some levels of disaggregation, which are quite important, but which are listed here as optional and should be measured only where feasible. The first of these is occupational category. It's quite important that countries can measure vaccine uptake among health workers. And then there are some other occupational groups, which would also be relevant for COVID-19 vaccination. The second category is, is the risk factors. So whether or not people have underlying conditions that make them more susceptible to severe COVID risk. Ideally, the system can measure uptake among people with at least one condition separately from people with no conditions at all. The third category is context. Um, certain national policies might prioritize vaccination in long-term care facilities, prisons, universities, schools, etc. And it might be possible to actually separate vaccinations given in those settings from vaccinations to the general public. And finally, there's vaccination among other equity dimensions. For example, by socioeconomic, ethnic, religious, or other determinants of, of inequities. Um, it's important to monitor equitable access to vaccination, but it might not always be easy to do that with your monitoring system. So countries might need to rely on, on specific service to find out what the vaccination coverage or uptake is among those categories. So how will you get the data to monitor all these indicators? We distinguish between two systems. Uh, the first one, the administrative system, is the entire system that is set up to record vaccinations are, as they are being administered and report that upwards to the public health authority. Those kind of systems, uh, they allow for ongoing and timely availability of data, but they might be limited in their dimensions of disaggregation, so you don't get as much detail with administrative systems. And they're also dependent on uh, accurate recording of all, and on very good population estimates. On the other hand, covered service, they allow for more disaggregate analysis. Uh, they're not as reliant on accurate denominator data because they rely only on a sample of the population that is being interviewed. Um, but they are dependent on the quality of the home-based records and other records that are available. And they are less timely and less frequently available. We distinguish two kinds of administrative data systems. The first kind is the aggregate system that depends on tallying of recorded vaccinations and consolidated reports that are periodic and go to a central health authority through a number of intermediate levels. The other kind is the individual data system in which uh, personal immunization records are being digitized often and can be analyzed at will or almost in real time. So they allow for much more detailed analysis and, and aggregations, but they seldom include non-traditional target groups, for example, health workers or older adults. One element of the monitoring system that we said was extremely important are the home-based records. So the personal vaccination records, the cards or the certificates, they should provide the proof of vaccination that you need for travel, education, or occupational purposes. Uh, they're also used to establish vaccination status in covered service. They provide the information that is required for safety and disease surveillance, and they can be used to later also include other vaccines recommended in the target group, for example, uh, influenza vaccines. For the design of a personal record, uh, you should think about including the following details. So first of all, personal details of the vaccinated person, name, birth date, sex, address, maybe a national ID, and any other information that is relevant in, in your country's context. Then for each of the lines, so for each of the doses that will be given, those one, those two, those three boosters and, and, and whatnot, different, different lines that include the date of vaccination, the vaccine product that is used, the dose number that is given, the batch and lot number, and the facility that provided the vaccination. And more detailed uh, guidance, including templates, are forthcoming.
In addition to the home-based records, you should also think about updating the facility-based records. So the records that are being kept at health facilities, care homes, prisons, doctor's offices, etc. So they need to have space for COVID-19 vaccines um, that include more or less the same information as the home-based record, but might also include information about the test results, for example, for COVID or any adverse events following immunization. In case also special cases, maybe for the health worker registers. So in case uh, health workers registers don't exist, um, developing them will be extremely useful uh, to help organize health worker vaccination. Countries that use aggregation-based reporting systems need to develop tally sheets and, and reporting forms that are compatible. So designed together, meaning that every box in the reporting form has a source in a tally sheet or something else in the facility that helps count what needs to be reported. The tally sheets themselves, they need to be disaggregated along the same dimensions as discussed, discussed before, so allowing for sex, age range, disaggregation, etc. And uh, different tally sheets can be used, for example, for different uh, vaccine products that are used uh, for different targeted groups or different strategies. For example, when vaccinating in a long-term care facility, you can use a specific tally sheet for that so that you don't have to mix those informations up with the general population vaccination, etc. So again, more information and more guidance is forthcoming. It is also important that countries continuously assess the readiness and the capacity of health facilities to provide COVID-19 vaccines. On this slide, you find a reference to a suite of capacity assessments in the context of the pandemic that you can use to measure that readiness. So in summary, there's quite a few elements to monitor. So the service availability, and readiness, for example, human resources, cold chain, vaccine and other supplies, um, vaccine uptake and coverage by geography and targets, any adverse events following immunization, and disease surveillance data. So these are the main buckets of data domains that should be monitored by national programs. So what are some key takeaways? So the first key takeaway is that you should anticipate a strong and urgent demand for data by different stakeholders as soon as COVID-19 vaccination gets underway. So you need to anticipate those data needs and you need to strengthen data systems for collection and timely reporting. One of the best things you can start doing even ahead of vaccination is to establish estimates of the target population size and start registration, registration of target groups where feasible. For example, make listings of health workers for each of the districts and consider those as targets or beneficiary lists that you can use while you start implementing the vaccine. Other takeaways include the need to think about digital systems that you have in your country and how they might facilitate COVID-19 vaccine introduction. So those digital systems may include electronic immunization registries or the health management information system or uh, supply chain management systems or even facility or health worker registers. Finally, also like home-based personal records will be required for assessing coverage uh, and also for for certifying vaccination for individuals. So in summary, start with the identification of data needs and, and your monitoring objectives. Then identify the indicators that you will need to monitor progress and to communicate also progress according to the geographic and all the disaggregations that we talked about. Then design a system to record, report, analyze and use vaccination data and evaluate whether that system and the data that it produces meets your needs. You can then tweak it and, and refine it to, to get to a more and more performing system over time. So thank you for attending this module and going through the slides and listening to the explanation. And good luck with the monitoring of COVID-19 vaccines.